A group of 12 leftists at SUNY Plattsburgh canceled my amazing comedy show. Now, 100 to 350 people from the community could have come laugh, but 12 people who are insecure with who they are, insecure with their gender, their sexuality, they demanded free speech end just for them. We talked about that last week, and a lot of people said, Kayvon, what ended up happening with that? Well, I have to let you know now exactly what went down. They booked me for a show at SUNY Plattsburgh. I've already performed at seven SUNYs before, State University, New York. The show was going to be so much fun. I was going to go to a very rural part of New York. It's not Manhattan at that time. It was going to be up near the border, and it was going to be a fantastic event for the community, not just the students, but of course, the students would all get in for free, but it was going to be for everybody. Then came the newspaper article because of just a few dissidents. Comedian show canceled by Alexandra Sidorova, a Russian name. The Student Association canceled the show of comedian Kayvon, the self-proclaimed most famous half-Persian comedian in the world. By the way, that's not self-proclaimed. Everybody thinks that. The show was scheduled for April 5th. The show was canceled due to an influx of student emails to the SA, student activities, requesting it, alleging that Kayvon's jokes are transphobic and racist. Who would have thought sitting there and writing a joke could be transphobic or a racist? Could you imagine writing a joke that became a racist? We want to make clear we do not tolerate transphobia or any other form of hate or discrimination, the student activities posted on their Instagram page. It was the only comment SA gave on the situation apart from the announcement of the show's cancellation. President Ahmed the Mathawali did not respond to an email requesting an interview. Students emailed the student activities director Saturday, March 26, after Andrew Shellac, a senior history major, posted a message from his anonymous followers on his Instagram meme account. The message criticized Kayvon's jokes about transgender swimmer Leah Thomas. Now, I'll tell you what the joke was. The joke was, if Leah Thomas keeps winning against all these female swimmers, then maybe Michelle Phelps will come out of retirement. Some of you don't get that joke. There is nobody named Michelle Phelps. There's an amazing swimmer named Michael Phelps who can beat any man in the world in swimming. So imagine what Michelle Phelps can do against the women. Duh. How that joke could be interpreted as transphobic? Do I seem scared of trans? Do I seem upset about trans people winning? No, I just want Michelle Phelps to teach Leah Thomas a lesson. That's all. There's no phobia there. It's just mano e mano or womano e womano or Ray Romano against Ray Romano. Okay. We continue. Now, if you don't know who Kentanji Brown Jackson she is, she is the most unqualified to ever run for Supreme Court justice. Not because they didn't give her a degree at a fancy school or they didn't give her a promotion or a job because of various programs and groups she joined. What makes her the most unqualified justice to ever sit in the bench is because she cannot answer straightforward questions in a meaningful way. She lacks the wisdom of a Supreme Court judge. She demonstrated this when they asked her, can you define what a woman is? And she said, what did she say? Put it in the comments. What did she say? No, I can't. <laughs> I am not a biologist. Now that answer alone tells us that biology dictates who is a man or a woman. So she actually answered the way the left would hate, which is a biologist can clearly tell if it's a man or a woman. Whereas the far left-wing radicals, Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and all the Democrats, believe that biology does not tell us if it's a man or a woman, only social cues. So I did not make a racist joke about Kentanji Brown Jackson. My joke was Kentanji Brown Jackson wets her pants in the Supreme Court lobby because she couldn't figure out which bathroom to use. <laughs> that has nothing to do with how black she is, how uh, she grew up in what community, what kind of racial background. No, it was merely she has to pee her pants because if there's no biologist in the lobby, how will she know which restroom to use? It's called satire. Of course, leftists don't understand satire. That's why they're not funny. We move right along. 
Here is where they slander my good name, which is potentially a lawsuit. We all know that. You can't just pick a horrible name, racist, sexist, bigoted, homophobe, and just say it. You have to have some sort of proof or evidence. Neither of those jokes are, but here is where they slander me. Kayvon's transphobic and obviously racist. Lawsuit. Does anyone hear a, a lawsuit coming? If I so decide to go there, his name is in print. He called me a transphobic and obviously racist. Not even, in my opinion, racist is what he should have said. He doesn't belong on our campus. And it would be super helpful if you could get the word out. Kayvon, that's me, responded to the allegations. Whether you found my jokes funny or not, they are not transphobic or racist in any way. Even if they were, that's protected speech according to SUNY's policy. Kayvon left comments on Shellac's page the next day, calling him a fake account with fake likes and fake fans. Yes! Kayvon also pointed out that Shellac's page was full of obscenities. So how am I indecent for making light fun of Michelle Phelps, Leah Thomas, and Kentonji Jackson, but this guy can have F this, screw that, I hate you this, I'm not going to school here no more, and I hate this campus. He is the one who's phobic. He's school phobic. Here he goes complaining. Kayvon called me phobic against Persians, Shellac said. I don't understand where that came from. The irony. The irony is I called you phobic against Persians because you called me phobic against a whole litany of groups that I could care less about one way or the other. Shellac said Instagram logged him out of his meme account due to his suspicious activities. Yeah, uh, his account got shut down permanently forever. Nobody logged him out. He is done because that page had so many violations of decency, hate speech, bullying, that he lost his account. I still have my account. I wonder why. I shellacked him. Unable to restore his account, shellac made a new one. Feel free to go there, report that, and get him shut off over there if you'd like as well. I'm sure he's up to his usual. Here he writes, Kayvon is a grown-ass man just belittling a bunch of college students that go to a college that he's probably never heard of until like a week ago, Shellac said. It's not belittling a bunch of college students. Notice how the left is the bully, then they become the victim. They attack you, then hide behind. I'm just a college student. I'm just a trans. I'm just a phobe. I'm just a gay. Are you the attacker or the victim? They like to play both. Besides experiencing harassment and bullying from students, Kayvon says a violation of First Amendment and free speech came. Kayvon accuses students in participating in hate speech, bullying, racism, and comedy phobia. Aha, I love that. I did accuse them of comedy phobia. The petulant tantrums of a few should never create a situation where an artist loses their peaceful freedom of speech or their income. Kayvon wrote in an email, I assure you I have a much bigger crowd that wants to hear me more than they do. They know that as well, which is why they robbed the community of an amazing night of comedy. Shellac said, you can't just say transphobic and racist things legally. I mean, you can, but you can't expect the backlash. And so that's what we gave Kayvon. We gave him a backlash. And we will end it there. You can read all that and more. It is highly publicized and published on SUNY's newspaper which got picked up by the Free Republican Press and three or four other outlets, proving that I am becoming one of the forward thought leaders in fighting cancel culture, fighting the radical left, and pushing for free speech and American values. Who would have thought a half-Persian would be so important in 2022? We'll be back. <laughs>